What's up, peoples? Welcome to Nate's Journey slash Life Lesson. Today, I will talk about what I learned from the Revolt Summit. So, I looked at this summit more than once, but the first time that I looked at it, the main thing that I got from this panel was that we can move forward as a community despite the different perspectives that we've had. Now, topic number one was about the organization called Trap to Vote. Now, Stephen Perget specifically made it known that he does not have an agenda, but the agenda to lift up the youth from the millennials to Generation Z. Now, I do have to admit that when trying to reach the youth to get them to vote, one of the first things that is said to them is that their ancestors died for them to have the right to vote. That is why they should go out and vote. But in all actualities, the youth and people in general, we all have different reasons that motivate us to go out and vote. And it was a question that was brought up of how can we reach the youth through different messages which will inspire them to be involved in the voting process. We definitely have to be delivered from that old language around who died for us to have our right to vote and all of these different things. It doesn't work. I think in this particular moment, we have to respect the fact that young people are brilliant. They are reading, watching, listening, and paying attention. And whether or not we value their opinions does not mean it does not count. The only way we can bring young people to the table is to talk to them about the issues that are at the center of what they care about. In their communities, police brutality is an issue. Obviously, education is an issue. Jobs are issues. These are the things that they care about. So when we fly in looking fancy and having people that don't know anything about Miss Lucy's water being dirty and don't know anything about what's going on on the ground, we are missing them completely. I agree, I agree 100% with what Tamika said and what you said. I, think, I don't think that people should be uh, motivated to vote uh, 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 because of who died for them to vote. I think they should be motivated to vote because of the decisions that are being made affect them and affect the people that they would die for. You understand what I'm saying? I think that one of the main issues is we wait too late to start to try to motivate young people. This should be a conversation in first grade, second grade, third grade, all the way up through high school, not wait until you're 18 and it's the first election uh, uh, after your 18th birthday and then try to explain the importance of voting to you. Uh, I think it has to be like a mindset that is developed over time. Um, and also, I mean, I, I know you said you, uh, you said you don't have an agenda, I, and I appreciate that because we need people like you, but I do have an agenda. My agenda is to liberate my people, teach them to love each other again, revitalize my community, create a self-sustaining, financially stable ecosystem that will be present for generations to come. And you can't do that without putting the proper people in office that have a, a, a similar interest and, and, and a passionate, uh, just a passionate need to fulfill these voids, whether it's education, whether it's employment, whether it's uh, just proper opportunities for us and access a seat at the, not a seat at the table we want the motherfucking table you know what i'm saying now to build on the three points that was made in this discussion the host brought up an interesting point on how we should develop our own agenda to influence force or lobby our agenda where no matter whose political party is dominant they will have to follow the agenda that we want in place. And he asks, what is the best way to engage a two-party political system? So before the question was answered, Killer Mike wanted to make it known that it is definitely important to educate the youth on our history in a motivating way so that they will be motivated to vote. And then he answered the second question. If you look at our mayor, I supported Vincent Fort Force, who was a Bernie brat. He put forth a long um, a marijuana decriminalization bill. Well, why does marijuana decriminalization matter in Atlanta? I know a lot of young men who are my sons and Tip's son age, they get a bullshit marijuana conviction, all of a sudden their Hope Scholarship ends at Clark, ends at Morehouse, ends at Georgia State. I wanted to make sure that that couldn't happen to a young man again. 
I told I told her when she was on city council, if you can get city council, if you guys support that decriminalization bill, you have my full and total support. And I would like to publicly say, man, me and T, I stood out in the rain on those steps that day and that morning and gave that speech, gave those speeches on her behalf because we saw her come closer to the progressive chain of thought that we wanted. And she, and after doing it, Atlanta followed, Clarkston was ahead of us, but you see other counties like the Cab, were net now decriminalizing. That comes directly out of local politics with Vincent Ford. That comes directly out of us sitting down talking to candidates. And in terms of national candidates, if your national policy appeals or I see it can work for my people in some way, you have my support, but you also have my honesty. And my honesty is always going to tell you what I do and what I don't support, or like black folks say, what I do and what I don't fuck with. If I fuck with more of what you do, I fuck with you. If I don't, I'm going to go quiet as your wife when she mad. <laughs> Candace. Same thing on, on the other side. How are we negotiating? What is the negotiating tactics so that we're not acquiescing to somebody else's agenda but being clear about ours in the process? of giving them our support? Well, I would say the first thing is that it's important to identify what our agenda actually is. All righty, guys. Thank you guys for sticking around to the very end. And here's what I learned from part one of the Revolt Summit. Number one, it is definitely important to reach the youth to create greater change in the next generation to come by educating them to vote, whether it's by meeting them where they are, letting them know that they matter, or educating them on their history, which will motivate them to be included in the voting process. Also, in order to engage the two-party political system, it is definitely important to have an agenda in place that we as a community want accomplished within the political system. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys for part two of what I learned from the Revolt Summit panel.